Welcome back to the Springs Radio Real Estate Show. I'm Cheryl Garlock with Colorado Front Range Properties here. And my guest today on the show is Andy Shin with AY Realty. Andy, I want to welcome you to the show again. Great, thank you. You know, uh, we've got some great new things here happening on our website for, for people who are out there. You know, we've had a lot of people displaced by the recent fires. Yeah. And not only that, we have a lot of people moving into town here that don't have a place to live. I'm sure you're finding it a little bit tough to fill some rentals. It's a tight rental market anyway, and obviously the fire fire victims are, are finding housing, so it's, it's a very tough rental market right now. It is. So what, what we've done to help alleviate some of that, we introduced a new page on the SpringsRadioRealEstate.com website. So if you are have a home that you're selling yourself or you're renting or whatever, or you need a home, there's a place called Home Match. Think of it as match.com, but it's for real estate, okay? All right. All right, for us anyway. So uh, for its home match here for us in the Colorado Springs area there. So just go to springsradiorealestate.com, click on the tab that says home match. If you've got a home that you're offering for sale or for rent, you can fill in your information right there. And if you've got um, a... Um, uh, a situation where you need a home or an apartment or something like that, you can fill in your information right there. And then we can kind of post that information on the site as featured homes. And uh, property managers certainly can go ahead and do that as well because we're really trying to meet the needs of the people who are challenged in the housing market today and finding places because we're in limited supply. Absolutely. That sounds like a great site. Yeah, it's really good. SpringsRadioRealEstate.com. So now, you know, we're going to be talking about investment real estate. And investment real estate also starts with just buying your own personal residence. I want to tell you, first and foremost, if you don't own a personal residence already, that's the first way you invest in real estate. And that really is true to investing in yourself. Don't you agree, Andy? I do agree. Absolutely, yeah. too. And, and you, know, you need to do yourself a favor. This is it's not about making a, a landlord rich or making a bank rich. And all. This is about putting money in your pocket at the end of the time period, whatever time period that period might be there. So let's talk about some key activities for doing successful investing. Uh, and because you work with this a lot, and I do too there, but you know, when I sell people real estate that might be a single family home, a town or condo that they might want to rent out, or a plex property, you know, then they don't always want to manage it themselves. I, and I know, as you know, Andy, from personal experience, managing things yourself is not the best idea always. There's a lot of reasons not to, not to do that, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, activities to make it successful. And I think one of them is to probably not manage yourself if you can avoid it. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, and uh, one of the activities is to maximize income on the property. And that sounds like it, it just, well, it makes sense. But a professional is going to be able to help you price the property right. And I know I've talked about that before, so I won't spend a lot of time on that. But the other piece is vacancy. If you have two weeks uh, vacancy between renters, you think, oh, no problem, I get another renter. But if you get a $1,500 rental, you just lost $750. How would you feel if a $750 repair came in? You'd probably be you know, stressed out about it. People don't always think of vacancy the same way. A property manager is going to help you keep as close to 100% occupancy is possible and in this market that's really possible yeah and you know that's a good point too because you know a lot of times people in pricing their rentals you, you know when we uh, list and sell real estate we have access to the MLS here to be able to do that and that's the the, mo the truest form of data that is really available for, particularly for sales but for rental properties there you know actually our MLS does have some of that information in there but but really, we don't have as much in there as you do in regular sales. So you have to go to these other sources. And that's why a good property manager who's really attuned to the market knows what that single-family home is going to rent for in a particular area. I know you must get asked this. You must be drilling numbers in your brain all the time. Absolutely. And, and you're right about the MLS. So you get a limited sample off there, which is great because you can get a lot of detail. How long did that house take to rent? How much were they pricing it for? If it rented in three days, maybe it was underpriced. There's a lot of a lot of good data you can get from the MLS. But you've got to be using somebody who knows every neighborhood in town because um, the rental market is constantly changing, and frankly, it's constantly going up here in the springs. Yeah, and I say that because we don't have a really large, uniform database where, you know, like in realtors, as selling real estate, we put everything into the MLS, and it's our little Bible, and we all tap into it to get the information out of there that we need to provide to consumers there. But in the world of property management, you don't really have a single large database that everybody shares. No, you don't, but I'll tell you, if you're using a property manager who has a good size book of business, there's a good chance when they look at your property, they rented a property two blocks away 
uh, within the last couple of months, and they have a feel for that neighborhood. And they've, uh, so they can get the limited research they can get online and on the MLS, but they've also got a feel for that particular neighborhood. Well, that is, that's really, really great there. So let's talk about some of the systems that a property manager will have in order to go ahead in place to protect the property. This is where people make mistakes, Cheryl, trying to manage property uh, themselves because property managers have uh, specific systems that work that they've tried over time that they've used on a lot of properties uh, that really work. I'll give you one example is the turnover process of a unit. So if I've got somebody uh, moving out uh, June 30th yeah. and I've got somebody moving in July 1, how does that happen? What are all the systems that make that happen? And Literally, uh, I've got access to an overnight crew if I need to uh, turn over a unit if it's left in, in poor condition from a prior tenant. And that could be painting, that could be carpet cleaning, cleaning the unit, and getting it ready for the next tenant. There's advanced processes with the person who's leaving to understand what kind of condition they're going to leave that unit in to figure out what we need to do to have it ready for the, for the next person coming in. So at times, we can literally have zero vacancy. How do we show the property while it's still occupied? Those are systems. That's just one system. Uh, and there's uh, dozens of systems that property managers have that are going to help you maximize uh, your income. That one system alone could save you several hundred dollars, if not a couple thousand dollars, in the course of a year. Absolutely there. And, you know, um, what about, like, doing those property inspections? You guys are pretty much attuned to that. Do you guys have systems in place for that as well? Absolutely. So when you talk about maintaining the condition of the property, we get a whole process around how do we do that. And that means exterior inspections very frequently, more than monthly, and interior inspections. Uh, a couple times a year, and it obviously depends on the tenant and what you find at one inspection that tells you what frequency you want to be back at for the next inspection. Right, and do you have to do, if you find something that's out, out of order, whether it be tenant-caused or be subject to just the landlord's responsibilities because it's a property defect, then you have some uh, repair inspections that have to go back in there to make sure the repairs have been done correctly. That's right. If people think about condition inspections, I want to make sure the tenant's taking care of the home, and that's important. Uh, and we do that, uh, and we do all the follow-up with the tenant. But there's also maintenance inspections. When I go in the home, uh, what needs to be maintained? Uh, and what's going to help us keep uh, something from escalating down the road? So all of that and the follow-up, those are all part of the systems that a property management company, a good one's going to have in place. We only have a few seconds here left, Andy, but I want to ask you one question here. What kinds of mistakes do you think the largest single mistake that property or owners of property uh, renting their homes themselves do make themselves? Yeah, I can talk about a lot, but the one would be uh, not maximizing income because of the vacancy issue I just talked about, turning over tenants and not pricing it right. Wow. Well, you know what? we got a whole lot more to share with you on the Springs Radio Real Estate Show. Get your pen and paper ready because now, today we are are talking about income property and investment property, but I'm going to share with you some Plex property information. So get your print, pen, and paper ready because you're going to be interested in this stuff that I got to tell you here right now. So we'll be